This is Eddie Muller, welcoming you back to Noir Alley. Now, last weekend, we enjoyed a bit of sightseeing in the low-rent district, the B unit at RKO, where the clay pigeon was made. This week, we head uptown. And while Warner Brothers may not have a reputation as the classiest of Hollywood studios, today's film, The Letter from 1940, is as prestigious as it's ever going to get in Noir Alley. It features Warner's queen, Betty Davis, in a vehicle designed especially for her. And it's directed by the great William Wyler, who lived atop the industry's A-list. William Wyler was the original Steven Spielberg. And right out of the gate, let me shortstop all those cards and letters and posts and tweets that will pour in asking why the letter qualifies for Noir Alley if it was made before the Maltese Falcon, the film I always credit with starting the noir movement in Hollywood. Now, there are several reasons why this film stands outside the noir genre, if you will. And it has everything to do with Betty Davis and William Wyler. At the time she made this picture, Davis was arguably the most popular actress in America. And although she often played women who'd be right at home in film noir, her imperious persona positioned her far above mere genre pictures. In films like Fog Over Frisco, Marked Woman and Satan Met a Lady, in which the Maltese Falcon was rewritten expressly for her, Davis showed a smart and steely attitude that would have been a perfect fit in film noir, as would her willingness to play unsympathetic characters like Leslie Crosby, the duplicitous woman in today's movie. Oh, I know what you're thinking. You despise me. You think Bob will rid of me if they do hang me. I don't despise you. It isn't important what I feel about you, do you understand? But in some ways, Davis was the acting equivalent of Alfred Hitchcock. She transcended genre. People watch a Hitchcock movie. They watch a Betty Davis movie. They can't be categorized. These artists created their own category. Beyond that, the main character in the letter is a woman. And as I've noted several times before, Male film critics who set the template for recognizing and theorizing about noir rarely included women's pictures in their male-centric theses, often overlooking representative noirs that starred Barbara Stanwyck, Joan Crawford, Ida Lupino, and Betty Davis. And all of what I just said, except the part about being a woman, can be applied to director William Wyler as well. His creative purview was vast, from costume dramas to chamber pieces to historical spectacles. Like Betty Davis, he was never confined by genre. He wasn't above making crime pictures, as Dead End, Detective Story, and The Desperate Hours will attest. But even in those pictures, the grit and desperation had a patina of prestige that was part and parcel of a William Wyler production. He was Hollywood's ultimate perfectionist, willing to spend endless time and money and sometimes hundreds of takes to get exactly what he wanted. Now, studio bosses could whine and moan, and so could his leading ladies, as Davis famously did about certain choices in this movie. But in the end, no one could fault the results. Now, Weiler had directed Betty Davis to her second Best Actress Oscar in 1938's Jezebel. And when Warner Brothers bought this property for her, it was owned by Paramount, she requested that Warner's hire Weiler as the director. Now, the two had had an affair making Jezebel, and although they often fought like cats and dogs on the set of the letter, Davis always acquiesced, saying, I lost those battles, but I lost to a genius. Producer Hal Wallace would say that the emotional tension that existed between the actress and her director brought an extra spark to the production. He said, the air hummed with feeling from the first frame to the last. Now, the letter is actually a remake. The original version, based on a short story and play by W. Somerset Maugham, was released in 1929, one of the last movies made by actress Jean Eagles before she died of drug and alcohol abuse. And she was nominated posthumously for a Best Actress Oscar. Now, Betty Davis was obsessed with Jean Eagles, and was determined to have her own crack at the part of Leslie Crosby, 
a woman who murders her lover and claims self-defense. It would earn the actress her fourth of 10 Oscar nominations. Interesting to note that Davis also remade Gene Eagle's last film, Jealousy, as the 1946 melodrama and borderline noir, Deception. Now, Tony Gaudio is the cinematographer on The Letter, and you're going to see the value of his contribution immediately. This film features one of the most memorable opening shots of any film ever made. Gaudio's lighting and camera moves are impeccable, but then they had to be. This was a William Wyler production, which means Hollywood movie making at its best and most prestigious. Not a word you will hear too often in Noir Alley. From 1940, here are Betty Davis, Herbert Marshall, James Stevenson, and Gail Sondergaard in The Letter. 